This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey! What's up, guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be yet another Yu-Gi-Oh! World Chalice combo tutorial, or at least a somewhat simplified World Chalice combo tutorial to help people with the fundamentals of this deck and the fundamentals of certain combos, so on and so forth. I thought I was out of things to talk about for combos and redoing the ones that the ban list forced adjustment on, and stuff like that, but it turns out that there was one very critical aspect that I did not cover, and that is, what do you do with hands involving Brilliant Fusion and World Legacy World Chalice? But other than these two cards, nothing of real merit. No Venuses, no Transmodifies, no um, no Rescue Rabbits, no Gofus. What do you do with just these two cards in a combo? Because I started watching a lot of people online, like on Dueling Book and stuff, and seeing people play out World Chalice hands, and they would do things with Brilliant Fusion, uh, World Legacy, World Chalice that really didn't get you anywhere. And ultimately, it was just, it was a really big, like, upset to me. I was like, there's got to be something that people are just not getting with how they could utilize these cards. Considering that they're both two of the most broken cards in this deck, there's got to be a way to utilize them to some, you know, good combo capability. And there is. So, I see a lot of people just not doing this correctly. They'll send Lee off Brilliant Fusion. Then they'll send their uh, they'll send something like their their Seraph Knight to add lead a hand, and then they just won't be anywhere. They won't be doing anything. Or they'll send another card from their hand to the grave, and then they'll uh, they'll normal summon Lee with the extra normal, and then they'll normal summon World Legacy World Chalice to make Orum. But then ultimately, after their World Legacy World Chalice resolves, they're not really anywhere like better for it in terms of where they could have been. They only end up getting like a plus two overall rather than what I'm about to show you, which is. It is, it is unfortunately not possible to do an extensive play with World Legacy, World Chalice, and Brilliant Fusion alone, but adding any monster into the mix, any normal summonable monster that is not a combo piece, aka something like a Hand Trap, your Max C or your Ash Blossom, actually lets you generate eight cards out of these three and get you a plus four, letting you draw three off Ningirsu. And also, before you guys start going crazy and start making like making fun of my ass and being like, but I don't wanna get rid of my Maxi. I don't wanna get rid of my ass blossom. Those are my hand traps. Listen, hear me out. At the end of the combo, you have the option to add back whatever hand trap to your hand off a of firewall dragon. So Using it as a combo piece is definitely something that is beneficial for you overall in this sequence. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on. I'm going to show you how this sequence plays out. It is, unfortunately, it's specifically two cards. It's these two cards, uh, but no other starters. Like, no Lee, no Rescue Rabbit, no Venus, no Transmodify, none of that nonsense. None of those superior starters, no Gofu even. Just these two cards plus a monster you can normal summon. Um, and if the monster is a vanilla, that obviously changes the combo sequence, and that is what I will show you after this first run through in an expanded form. I'll show you what happens if you swap this out with literally a vanilla in your deck and the additional uh, resources you can gather there. But anyway, so the way this gets played out for the option of you to use your max C in this instance as a combo piece and then be able to add it back after you go plus four uh, is first off, obviously, activate the Brilliant Fusion, and you're going to send Gym Knight, Lazuli, or your Garnet. Uh, and the Agent of Creation Venus from your deck to the grave to summon your Gym Knight, Seraph Knight into the extra monster zone. Now, a lot of people, like I said, I see them send Lee, and they'll send a card out of their hand to get Lee back, and then they just, they don't end up as far along in a combo sequence as they could be. Uh, but, like, that just, this, you want to reach as much as you can. You want to be getting draw threes off in Gear Suit instead of draw twos. You want to be ending with four Link Monsters on field instead of, uh, instead of only three. Like, there's so many different things that, just, like, make certain sequencings superior to others but anyway so you use your additional normal summon on whatever monster you have in your hand in this case the max c that we're going to use and then add back later and then you're going to tribute it for your regular normal summon or your additional whichever one you're using your seraph knight whatever that doesn't matter it's just uh, you're keeping the seraph knight on the board so it doesn't matter anyway but you tribute for world legacy world chalice and then you'll link with these two cards and prepare to clinch them cheeks and hope that your opponent doesn't have an Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, which at this point you're going to trigger World Legacy World Chalice, and in either combo, in either sending Lee and sending a monster out of your hand, you would have gotten hit by Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring in that combo as well. So, like, 
it's definitely not something that changes in this combo uh, versus like sending Lee instead of Venus. But so you'll use World Legacy World Chalice's effect and you will special summon Lee the World Chalice Fairy and you will special summon Chosen by the World Chalice out of your deck or any vanilla really, the vanilla World Chalice monsters. I'm playing Chosen in my build because it's really the only one that's like the best one to run right now. But Lee will trigger and you're summoning them specifically in these zones by the way, specifically the Lee here. And so you're going to trigger Lee's search effect and you're going to search for your World Chalice Guard Dragon and add it to your hand. And now from here, you're going to link with Eeb and the vanilla that you brought out, in this case the Chosen, into Orum, the World Chalice Blade Master. Now from here, Eeb will trigger its effect, special summoning that Guard Dragon out of your hand. So then you use Orum's effect, targeting the lead attribute it, and you will summon back the Venus that you sent to Grave off Brilliant Fusion into the furthest away zone from your main monster zones that Orm points to. So if you're using the left hand side, then obviously you'll just summon Venus on the furthest left zone, but either furthest left or furthest right zone, whichever side you're using. If you're using the left hand side of your board for this, just reverse all the card placements you see me do. But so you get your Venus out on the board and so now your Venus is going to generate three free monsters. So you're going to pay 1500 for your Venus and you're going to summon all three of your mystical shine balls from your deck. And then from here, you're going to link with the World Chalice Guard Dragon and one of the Mystical Shine Balls, because they are different types and different attributes, into another copy of Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess, that we're using here. And so now that's opened up your zones, getting you ready for your Ningirsu play to draw three cards. And so from here, you're going to link with the Venus and the Mystical Shine Ball into Proxy Dragon, either here or here. It doesn't really matter where. All that matters is that you link with Venus here because what you want to do is you want to get rid of the monster in this zone because instead of wasting extra deck resources to make a uh, Imduk when we're already going to be having to use uh, Guard Dragon's effect anyway we're going to use Guard Dragon's effect here to summon Chosen by the World Chalice back into that zone that the Venus was in getting it ready for the Ningirsu draw so now from here you're going to link with the Mystical Shine Ball into any Link one of your choosing either like Link Spider or Emduk. We've used no Emduks in this combo sequence, so I mean you can you can afford to throw them away. And then you're going to link with Proxy Dragon and Emduk into your Ningirsu, and then your Ningirsu is going to yield you three cards drawn off of its effect. So just by normal summoning the Max C and changing the way that you sequence your cards around World Legacy World Chalice plus Brilliant Fusion, sending Venus to be able to bring back with Aurum to start you know, getting a lot more cards on your board rather than just sending Lee, because sending Lee and resolving World Legacy World Chalice only really gives you four monsters to work with and then a Guard Dragon effect to float, so five monsters. But doing it in this way gives you many more monsters to work with because the Venus gives you three additional monsters, uh, the Guard Dragon uh, gets you a float back for one of your uh, revival, or rather not a float necessarily, but a revival for one of your vanillas anyway. And it just works out very, very much in your favor overall. And you get these three cards here. now. In this instance, at this point, at this middle ground point, these cards do matter what you drew. So at this point, you're at a plus eight, or not plus eight, you're at eight cards. <laughs> Jesus, plus eight, whoa. But you have one, two, three, four, five cards on field, and you have three in hand that you generated out of those three cards that you put into it. So it is technically a plus five to card advantage because you started with three and you ended up with eight. Now your extenders from this point on uh, are things like Exodius, Rescue Rabbit, World Legacy's Heart, other World Chalice monsters, stuff like that. So it's definitely a combo you can extend upon, but even if you had no other extenders, if by some by, if by some reason, some happenstance, that the other two cards in your hand weren't extenders and the three cards you drew were not extenders, from this point onward, you can still link with your Ningirsu and your Chosen into Firewall Dragon. And Firewall Dragon is co-linked with Eeb, so you can use Firewall Dragon's effect to add back one card so you can add back that hand trap that you used to start the combo sequence. If for some reason you cannot go any further in your combo, <laughs> you can at least say that you tried to dig for as many cards as possible and you can still sit on the max C and have a board, right? That's, that's the theory in this instance. But so I'm going to rewind this real quick and I'm going to show you how this changes if you add a normal monster to your hand that's normal summonable instead of the Max C or the Hand Trap or whatever, the card that gave you really no real value, essentially. I'm going to show you what happens if you implement that into your combo sequence. 
Alright, so for this version of the combo, I'm going to be showing you Brilliant Fusion plus World Legacy World Chalice and a vanilla monster. Now, this can be any vanilla monster in your deck. It could be a Shine Ball, although that does diminish the result because you're obviously going to be trying to Venus combo. Uh, but it could be any World Chalice vanilla. It could be Gym Knight Garnet if you're running that. All that matters is that it is a normal monster. And again, this is without any other extenders in your hand like Rescue Rabbit, Gofu, uh, Venus, Transmodify, any of those starters or extenders this is just purely off these three cards so the way that this changes is that you obviously are going to first normal summon your vanilla and link away with it into your link spider opening the zone down here now from here you're going to activate brilliant fusion again and this time you're going to send lazuli and venus again but the lazuli is going to have something to add back so lazuli's effect will trigger adding back chosen after you summon your gym knight seraph knight in the zone under the Link Spider. So now Lazuli triggers adding this back. And so now from here, you have an additional normal summon that you can perform. So you'll tribute the Seraph Knight for your World Legacy World Chalice in any zone that is not the one under Link Spider. Right? So then from here, Link Spider's effect is going to activate and you're going to special that vanilla back out of your hand. So you've cycled around cards. Uh, you've ended up getting a plus one immediately right here because you started with three cards and now you're at four. So it's like, it's very easy for you to start picking up what gives you advantage and what doesn't in your combo sequences. But going from here, you're going to link with Link Spider and the World Legacy World Chalice. And you're going to link summon into Ebe, the World Chalice Priestess, in the extra monster zone. And then World Legacy World Chalice's effect is going to trigger here. And again, you're going to hope that your opponent doesn't have Ash Blossom and Joy Spring because, unfortunately, these combos are already a stretch as it is. So it's really hard for you to try and mask them with uh, from uh, from Ash Blossom by using Link Monsters. Although it is possible. Like, if you had other World Chalice Monsters in your hand, it's definitely possible to do so. Uh, but regardless, um, even if you did get Ash Blossomed here, at the end of the day, you can still make, like, an Aurum with these. Um, and if you have another World Chalice in your hand to extend, it still, like, lets you Venus combo. So that's actually really cool as well. But anyway, your World Legacy World Chalice will trigger here. And you are going to summon from your deck a Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, and another Chosen by the World Chalice. And then the Lee's effect is going to trigger, giving you World Chalice Guard Dragon to your hand. So now from here, you've just ended up with a lot of monsters that you can actually utilize. So you're going to link away with... Uh, with, let's see here, well, yeah, Chosen by the World Chalice and Eve the World Chalice Priestess into your Orum the World Chalice Blade Master. And you could choose to trigger Eve's effect here uh, if you want to. It's not necessarily mandatory to do so, and you'll see why in a minute. You could choose to special the Guard Dragon out of your hand, but I prefer not to at this point in time. Uh, honestly, also because Guard Dragon is a form of protection for Orum, so, like, forcing that through is kind of good as well. But anyway, you'll use Orum's effect on the Lee. To destroy it, tribute it, whatever it does. Still haven't read it fully. I just know that it gets rid of it. And then it then summons Venus in the zone over here. So then you'll use Venus and you'll summon the three Shine Balls out of your deck yet again. Like I said, that's why I started without using a Shine Ball as a vanilla. Because it does diminish the result. Although it is still you know a good result. Because you, you end up plus one. <laughs> because you're using a vanilla instead of a hand trap in this instance. But if the vanilla was a Shine Ball, then like it still puts you back at the original starting point. Um, that the combo had in terms of uh, raw pluses and minuses because you're not getting a plus one here. Uh, you're taking an additional minus, you're taking a loss of a shine ball essentially, so things change. But, so from here you summon your three shine balls, and since these are different types and different attributes, psychic fire and fairy light, you are going to link with those into your Eve the World Chalice Priestess yet again. And then from here, you're going to link with Venus and a shine ball yet again into Proxy Dragon in either the middle zone or the zone to the left of Eve, either in this zone or this zone. And then from here, you are going to be able to link with the Shine Ball into Imduk in, honestly, just any zone. And then the reason we're doing this is like, I mean, it's very, it's very, like, not, uh, uh, it, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, it's not likely for your opponent to like have Ash Blossom and not use it on the World Legacy World Chalice and to wait for you to make Ningirsu, but I mean it's still it's just one of those things that you might as well mask it if you have the ability to, and also it just promotes better play lines. Um, so you can summon Ningirsu here with Imduk and Proxy Dragon. Chain Link One will be Ningirsu, Chain Link Two will be Imduk, and you will special summon the World Chalice Guard Dragon here, and then you will draw three cards. So you end up with. A better result overall, you still end up with the same number of cards as you do in the first instance of the combo, because you put three cards into it, and you still ended up with eight. It's still a plus five, but 
how this is different is that for the specific sequencing that I just showed you, you didn't use World Chalice Guard Dragon yet. It's here. It's sitting right here on the board. So what you get access into is that you get to access uh, the accessibility of making Firewall Dragon with uh, with like these two cards to continue your combo forward, and then your World Chalice Guard Dragon is a free revival effect, bringing back one of your Chosens or bringing back one of your Mystical Shine Balls, one of those things in general. It's um, it's very good for you for continuing onward because it puts less strain on whatever extenders you need to draw because at this point just like the previous combo you're going to have five additional cards in your hand because you're going to have the three that you draw here and then you're going to have two cards that you started with in your opening hand if you went first and so out of those five other cards you can have other extenders like rescue rabbit like exodius like world legacy's heart if you're playing dark factory of mass production that's a card that you could utilize as well there's a lot of different things that are good extensions and good pieces hell even like e telly to a lesser extent is a good extender here because you can summon the other copy of chosen out of your deck to keep going if you're playing that specific build or if you're playing those cards there's a lot of different things that go into play here in terms of what you have specific access points into as well as the fact that lee's graveyard effect is still loaded to add itself back to your hand as well as Guard Dragon is not going to be able is uh, is not used. Uh, I was going to say not going to be able to do something, but that's not right. It's not used for this specific combo sequence. It's sitting here on the field, so you can bring back cards after you're doing your combo like stuff, and it puts less emphasis on what has to be in your hand off of the uh, off of the ending point of this. You can have more subpar extension pieces and still end with a favorable sort of result. Whereas in uh, in the previous combo sequence, it put a lot more uh, strain on what you draw into. But you could draw into, like I said, like World Legacy's Heart, Exodius's, Rescue Rabbits, uh, E-Telly, Dark Factory Mass Production, Soul Charge. The, there's a very large list of what you could be playing. Um, and in my build, uh, with the Exodius's, with the Rescue Rabbits, the Soul Charge, World Legacy's Heart, and all that, uh, that's still a solid like 8 to 10 cards that you could draw at this point, where your deck is already very thinned. So like it's... It's a, very, it's a very good ratio for you to be uh, working with. They're very good statistical probabilities that you're working with at this point. As well as the fact that you just extend the combo because of the, the Guard Dragon being an additional card that you can have access to as well in the combo sequence. So, these were the two combo sequences I wanted to show you because I saw people all over Dueling Book this weekend just not really making a lot of, like, headway with it. Like, I... I had people that started talking to me about World Chalice, and I was bored, and they were like, come watch my games, and so I did. And I'd ask them what was in their hand, and they're like, I opened Brilliant Fusion, World Legacy, World Chalice, and a, and they would say that they bricked. Like, they didn't open Gofu, they didn't open Rescue Air, they didn't open Venus, Transmoth, any of that. But I was like, do you have a monster in your hand that can be normal summoned? And they are like, yeah. I was like, well, you could have done this play. And they are like, oh, shit, that's cool. That's cool as fuck. But anyway... That's all I really want to do for this video. There's only like one or two more World Chalice combo tutorials that I could probably put out in terms of like revisions and things like that. Uh, but then after that, I will probably be moving on to some more Mermail combos because I've got a few of those stockpiled. Some Dragoonity combos that I'm currently working on in terms of different variations with Destrudo and things like that. Um, I could just do a lot more combos in general for other decks as well, like ABC True Draco, uh, stuff like that. There's a bunch of different decks that I could do combos for. Spirals, once we get Double Helix. Like, I really like making combo tutorial videos, and I feel like I could easily make that this channel's niche going forward because they seem to be well received, and they they seem to be doing exactly what I want them to do, and I enjoy making them. So if that's what you're interested in, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you think that's a good idea or not, then definitely let me know. But other than that, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, all that sort of stuff. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below about the videos I've been uploading and the things that I've talked about in this video. Drop a like if you want to see more combo tutorials or if you want to see more World Chalice videos in general. Subscribe here if you're new and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I'd love to welcome you on board. And links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you really like the content I've been producing and want to help support the channel and my ability to make content directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so as well as giving you access into monthly raffle giveaways for significant amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh! product, like around the box level of price, and access to my private Discord server with me and a bunch of other people to discuss Yu-Gi-Oh! and other fandoms of various relevance and importance and things like that. So, even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support if you're interested and you'd have my eternal gratitude. But, as always, special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know, a lot more than you may understand, and as I always say, you have my eternal gratitude and thank you from the bottom of my heart. But, other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.